welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. When the idea of the Gauteng was first announced by former Gauteng Premier Mbazima Shalowa in 2000, many thought it would end up a white elephant after the 2010 Soccer World Cup. Sixteen years later, however, demand for the public transport system is healthy and on the rise. Irma Fenter joins me now to provide an update on the Gauteng's upcoming developments. Hi Irma. Hi Chanel. A feasibility study on the on a project to expand the Gau train is underway. Can you tell us more about that? Well, there's a, as you mentioned, there's a feasibility study underway. It will end at the end of August. It will hopefully be completed, says Gau train Management Agency CEO, um, Jack van Amerwe. Um, this feasibility study looks at four possible new lines to be added to the system. It will go to places such as Mamalodi or Soweto uh, and Randburg, for example. There's uh, numerous stations or, or lines uh, considered for this, as we, as we, as we noted. So this feasibility study will only be finished then, and it's not even a 100% certainty that these lines will be built in. As you know, government is a bit of a tight spot, financially speaking, so we don't know if these will be built. Um, however, the feasibility study forms part of the Gauteng government's um, transport master plan for the province, which sees rail as the public transport backbone for the province, which means that the Gauteng system forms an integral part of this expansion. And uh, of course, it would be nice if um, government finds the money to, to build these new lines. I'm sure a lot of people will be very happy if the hard train turns up at their doorstep. With such an undertaking in the works, ridership figures must be positive. It's positive and also not. Strangely enough, the, the system is at capacity at the moment in peak hours. Um, but ridership is only about 62,000 train passengers a week, a weekday. And uh, initially, the Hot Train Management Agency aimed for about 90,000 to 110,000 passengers a weekday. There are several reasons why this didn't, didn't happen. One of those is, of course, the eToll saga. Um, there was a belief that the push for f at 50 cents a kilometer on our freeways would push people towards the Hot Train. And then, of course, you know, the eToll <coughs> project didn't quite pan out that way. So there wasn't this really big push for passengers or for commuters to use the hard train. The other one was that the Midrand station didn't turn out to be a destination station as the, um, the Harting government believed. So there was supposed to be a huge development around Midrand station. Um, but this never happened. And of course, waterfall happened. Waterfall is across the highway. So the Midrand station is now kind of left there in the middle of, of nowhere. And as we noted, it was supposed to be a destination station. So people were supposed to go there from, let's say, Pretoria, get off. And then other people were supposed to get off and take that seat. So you would have high seat churn. You could sell the seat more than once. Now people actually take just the journey from Pretoria to Joburg largely. And that seat is probably only sold once, which means you have people for longer on the train and which means your seat train isn't that high, which means your income isn't quite as high, which also means that the hard train um, has to receive quite high subsidies at the moment from government. Of course, getting that ridership up from 62,000 people will mean that your subsidy can drop, which should be then a good solution for the Gauteng government. What else is the Gauteng planning to manage its increased capacity? There are several exciting projects in the, in the works. Of course, the most exciting of these is the uh, procurement of 48 new coaches. And uh, these will be the backbone of either running more trains or of lengthening the trains and adding to that capacity. Um, of course, you can take that eight car train and make it a 12 car train perhaps, or you can just run more trains more often. And with that, you can add to your capacity during peak hours. Um, these uh, new coaches will also see then um, upgrading in a signaling system in a new depot. So that's quite exciting. And the money for that is already secured. So that's pretty much um, black and white already a certainty. And then we also have some new buses. You'll see when you go to the Centurion station, for example, um, new minibus, Gauteng branded minibus taxis standing ready to, and they're driving, uh, riding on a specific set route, a uh, short route other than the buses. So that adds to the um, spread of the, and the footprint of the, of the Gauteng. And that also increases your capacity. And then also new parking bays. Um, the Gauteng management agency is adding a couple of thousand actually more than a couple of thousand parking bays to the system, which means more people can go and park at the station and catch the train. Of course, Jack van der Marwe also warns that he can't build a parking bay for every person using the hard train, so people will have to get used to using the buses. Another expansion project would be at the um, Oatambo International Airport, where the platform has been uh, lengthened, so that means that a longer train can now stop at the airport, meaning that more people can use that specific service. 
Some of the longer term projects that's not quite certain yet at the moment is um, building additional tunnels. So there's quite a bit of a problem at the moment in at Marlborough Station where the two trains, the one coming from the airport and the one coming from Pretoria, for example, have to use the same tunnel. So there's a, a bit of a deadlock there at the moment and you would need an extra tunnel there to add capacity to that system to uh, shorten the headway between trains. So in other words, to run more trains, you would need another tunnel between Santa and Marlborough. And also as the train between Park station and um, Santon is actually a single track tunnel. It means one train has to wait for the other train to exit before it can enter, which means it's very difficult for um, to shorten the headways between the trains. You have to run the trains at a certain headway and you can't actually run more trains per hour. So that is part of the problem. I know the Hartwig Management Agency is looking at those tunnels, but of course that would be very costly and that is very much a, a long-term project. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.